Welcome to Adapt and Class. Let's learn some endless content you need to know for your exams. This question always pop out. When you go and do QBank, you see them, people ask questions about it. They say, what, did, what is this rhythm? What do you do with it? I set questions around this to master. There's no questions they may ask you that you don't know. Stick around and learn some content regarding this specific condition. Your board love things that are normal and it will trap you to pick bad answers. Let's get to it. And as cares for a client on a medical surgical ward admitted for pneumonia reporting with sensation of fluttering or escape beat in the chest. Cardiac monitor showed the following rhythm. This is what you see. What do you think is that? This is what the cardiac monitor show. So what do you want to do first? Or what do you want to do? What do you think the rhythm, the question is asking you, the next you recognize that this is a what? Is this the atrial fibrillation? Is this atrial flutter? Is premature ventricular contraction and ventricular tachycardia? Testicking strategy, look at it. I see atrium, right? This is atrium ventricular rhythm, T wave. Then I see this guy in between them before a reset and come back atrium ventricular T wave, atrial ventricular T wave. You can see that this is regular rhythm. Uh, even though you have this, this is an odd structure. Look at this ventricle, it's different from that. You look weird, you have atrium, ventricle, T wave, they all of a sudden ventricle contraction, right? Then another T wave before atrium, ventricle, then a T wave, atrium, ventricle, T wave. You can see that this is an odd structure. Based on that, it can be atrial fibrillation because it's a regular rhythm. Atrial flutter, you're looking for what we call um, sorted features. I don't see that. Ventricular tachycardia, it can be because there's a atrial rhythm. This is how you do EKG. You don't have to memorize anything. You're going by your critical thinking. There is an atrial uh, rhythm. It can be a ventricular tachycardia. It's regular. It can be a fib. There's no short tooted. Therefore, there's a descendable atrium. It can be a flatter. So this is what we call premature ventricular contraction. And you can see... You're supposed to have atrium before the ventricle, then T wave. There's no atrium, then the ventricle fire. They give you T wave. Then you have atrium, ventricle, T wave. Atrial, ventricle, T wave. This is premature ventricular tachycardia. What happened? You're going to feel extra beat, right? There's an extra beat, and the patient feel like their heart is skipping a beat and some fluttering in their chest. There are certain conditions that can cause that, but we'll see that with questions. So this is the first idea. This is extra beat coming from the ventricle. If there's an extra beat coming from the atrium, it will become premature atrial contraction. This is premature ventricular contraction. And this is a condition you need to know because it's a good test taking strategy question they may ask you. They can ask you so many things. So that buckle up. Let's go. So this is pretty much your ventricular contraction. The next thing, what do you do? Which of the following findings should the nurse report to the air care provider as a priority? Prioritization 101. And this is monitoring a client cardiac rhythm and note frequent premature ventricular contraction on the EKG. If you see a question like that, it's a priority. Think about it. I told you this is a premature ventricular contraction. You're going to feel some fluttering of your heart. The most important thing is ask yourself, does the patient having symptoms with that? If they're having symptoms, you fix that before you find the problem. Therefore, the most important thing you should do, the client is experiencing my chest pain. Is this important to report to the air care provider? The client potassium level is what? 2.8. The client heart rate is what, 62, and the client blood pressure is 110 over 70. If I want you to pay attention to this as your number one answer, I will tell you they're having some bad chest pain. Potassium 2.8 is really bad. This is a problem. Which of the following findings should you report? My chest pain, yeah, we'll fix it. 
But if I see the potassium 2.8a, we got to fix this quickly before the patient gets into trouble. This is what I call prioritization. One is trappable, it will trap you, but two is more likely, right? So I'll give you an explanation. Even though it's okay to report my chest pain, it's not a priority at this time. 2.8 potassium will worsen the PVC and lead to dangerous rhythm. We do the following action should the next take. You see that I, I did a variety of the question. Some may trap you, but stay on your ground and keep on thinking about prioritization. It's the first thing you will do. And nurse is caring for a client who has frequent PVC on the cardiac monitor. Same question, but different answers, but in the different form. They, to me, they are the same answers, but I changed them slightly for you to think about it. The same thing, PVC, what do you do first? Give the patient a amiodarone, assess the client blood pressure and oxygen saturation, notify the healthcare provider, prepare to do cardioversion. You know it's not something that needs cardioversion. So D is gone. It's a bad, you do, you do cardioversion when you have tachycardia that is unstable, right? So this is gone. You want to tell the doctor? Yes. Do you want to check their blood pressure and oxygen saturation? And do you want to give them a amiodarone? One thing, one thing that you should know. This rhythm is causing escape in the heartbeat. Therefore, it can affect your hemodynamics. That is why every time you see PVC, ask the patient if they're having symptoms and what kind of symptoms are they having. And the best thing to do is to check their blood pressure. If you check their blood pressure, you know that it's affecting the heart. The heart is not pumping. It can also affect your oxygenation. Therefore, this is the best answer. Amiodarone is not used for PVC, right? It's not used, even though it can be used for tachyarrhythmia. This is a warning sign to figure out something is causing the problem. PVC is never a rhythm that you need to treat with medication. It's a warning sign. You have electrolyte problems. So we'll see a question and I'll give you all the risk factors associated with that. Which of the following actions should the net perform first? The same thing. And then observes the client admitted with what? MI, myocardial infarction, is experiencing what? Premature ventricular contraction. So he has a heart attack, now experiencing ventricular contraction contraction. The same concept. Ask yourself, is this bothering the patient? If it's bothering the patient, the certain things you will check. Their blood pressure, their oxygenation, either they having any bad symptoms. Instruct the client to cough and deep breathe. This is non supraventricular contraction. Check the client electrolyte, especially potassium is that. It's good to check it to see if that is what is causing it. But you are assuming that potassium is the one or magnesium causing that problem. Test the key strategy. Checking electrolyte is good. But in this question, if you pick it, you are assuming that. Document the finding and continue to monitor. No, we got to investigate what is causing the problem. Ask the client if they are experiencing any chest pain and palpitation symptoms. You see, once again, test the king strategy and using the concept, we're going to check potassium in a way, but that should not be the first thing. If they're having chest pain and palpitation, you know they're becoming immunodynamically unstable. And so you got to figure out. Once you assess the symptoms, then you can check electrolyte, cardiac monitoring, all those things, right? Which of the following nursing intervention is most appropriate? It's the same questions. I keep on changing it, but I'm showing you how the NCLEX will do the same thing. And then so that you don't pick the same answer, you just go by the buzzword and the scenario. The nurse is caring for a client who is showing frequent premature ventricular contraction on the cardiac monitor. Which intervention is appropriate? The most, all of them is appropriate, but the most. Prioritization 101, you have to be sharp. And encourage the client to increase their flow in intake. You assume it's hypertension, right? Administer supplementary oxygen as prescribed. I told you it can affect your blood pressure and your oxygenation. Position the client in high follow position. Sure, it will help them breathe. But if I have oxygen, I'd rather give it to you. Perform cardiac sinus massage to reduce PVC. This is not SVT. So I'll give you oxygen. 
and hence is caring for a client with frequent occurrence of the rhythm below on the monitor, which assessment finding will be most concerning and warrant immediate intervention. You have a patient having frequent uh, this finding, that is PVC. If you, what do you see that will be very concerning to you? You're rewriting the question. I have PVC. The client report feeling fatigued. They said they tired. The client has a heart rate of 88. The client PVC increased in frequency and occur in pairs. The client blood pressure is down. They're sticking strategy. The blood pressure is fine. Normalize. Heart rate is good. Normalize. Report about fatigue, maybe having some hypertension associated with it. But if it's occurring more frequent and in pairs, it's more dangerous. We call it couplet. That means it can lead to bad rhythm. So this one, we got to tell the doctor, we're getting into a bad rhythm. We got to fix it. Okay, so that's very important. So all PVC or carrying in pairs or couplet indicate increased ventricular irritation and it suggests an elevated risk for more dangerous rhythm. It's okay to worry about fatigue and virus and other things in this situation, but for this status, we should intervene. Which assessment finding will be most important for the nurse to report to their care provider? Once again, which one is bad? And then she's monitoring a client with pretty much frequent premature ventricular contraction who is receiving what? IV potassium for hypokalemia. I told you there's certain things that can cause that. Electrolyte is one of them. Now we figure out that it's potassium that is causing it and we're replacing the potassium, right? Now it has changed, everything has changed. I'm giving you potassium. Which of this is very important to report to a care provider? Client is reporting tingling in the fingers and the toes. Client PVC persists despite potassium replacement. The client urine output is 20 ml per hour. The client heart rate is 84 per minute. Uh, 84, right? So test taking strategy. His heart rate is fine. Don't worry about it. Tenderness and numbness of the toe, well, it's worrisome, right? It may be something related to the um, the hypokalemia, right? And then the PVC did not go away. But what? The client urine output is 20 ml. Which one do you think is more dangerous? Characterization 101. If you give the patient PVC, and potassium PVC is still there, you can give them more potassium, right? Patient, uh, we already know patient has hypokalemia, and that's why they're feeling some tingling in the toes and the fingers, right? That's why we're replacing the potassium. But if your kidney function is bad and you're getting IV potassium, we're going to have severe hyperkalemia, test-taking strategy. Therefore, urine output, 20 ml per hour is more dangerous than what patient reporting about finger toes uh, tingling or did you still have a PVC? If I'm giving you IV potassium and you can pee, your urine output is 20 ml every hour, that's renal failure. Therefore, renal insufficiency is bad to give a patient IV potassium. That would be really bad. So that's our answer. Client with history of heart disease is admitted with frequent PVC contraction. The nurse observes runs of PVC in the pattern of what? Bigeminal. Bigeminal means you have every other beat as a PVC. So you have one beat, then there's a PVC. One beat, there's a PVC. So it becomes regular. We call it bigeminal. And notice the client is slightly what? Diaphoretic. They're having symptoms and distress. So the bigeminal is causing the problem. What do you do first? I've analyzed the question for you. This is the way you should do. Break down the way the question is written in your own thinking. Multiple PVC, bigeminal, I'm having diaphoretic and restlessness. What do you think you should do? First thing, give the patient IV fluid to improve cardiac output. You may rather affect the patient's cardiac output because they may be in heart failure, right? So this is the thing you have to know. Check, obtain 12 lead EKG to access client rhythm. We already know that it's a PVC. EKG is not going to help us. It's having symptoms. Fix the problem. 
administer prescribed amiodarone to suppress the PVC. PVC is not treated with amiodarone. You got to find the underlying cause first. Assess the client oxygenation and give them oxygen. Yeah, PVC can affect your oxygenation. Patients diaphoretic and restless because probably they need something to help them. So oxygenation is very better as a choice. In explanation, assessing client oxygen saturation is the priority because hypoxia can trigger a worsening PVC. Giving them oxygen is better than trying to figure out with EKG if they have it. Which finding will indicate that the PVC may be causing immunodynamic instability? That's the key word. Immunodynamic instability. That means it's affecting your blood pressure, it's affecting your heart rate, it's affecting your oxygenation and the rest. And this is assessing a client with frequent premature ventricular contraction. Which of these indicate immunodynamic instability? Look for something that affecting the individual. Dizziness and lightheadedness. It looks like hypotension, immunodynamic problem. Pulse is 88. It's not affecting your heart. Client PVC decreased with ambulation. It's not affecting you. Client deny any chest pain. It does not affect you. Look for this one. Which assessment finding require the nurse immediate attention. The nurse is caring for a client with frequent premature ventricular contraction. Which of these, when you see, you got to do something. Once again, prioritization. All these questions sound the same, the same problem, but I give you the concept. You take the concept and use it for every question, but look at the way the answer is, uh, is given. Require intervention for premature ventricular contraction. PVC that will occur at the rate of six per minute. Is this something you should worry about? Yes. PVC that will occur in the pattern of pygemina. Is this something you should worry about? Yes. Multifocal PVC observe, observe on the cardiac monitor. Is this something you should worry about? Yes. These are all features of PVC that you should worry about. The client reports new onset of chest pain. Is this something you should worry about? Yes. But which of this it should be your priority? Immediate one. Be sharp. One is that chest pain. Which of the following the name should assess in a client with frequent PVC? Select or apply. That means patient has frequent PVC. And then so attend the staff education program on the causes of premature ventricular contraction. Which of the following the nature of assessing the client with frequent PVC? That means what are the causes of PVC? I told you it's extra heartbeat, right? And usually within the ventricle, and you feel like fluttering and skipping of heartbeat. It can affect your immunodynamic. It can affect your oxygenation. If you don't treat it, it becomes a severe problem. So every time you see it as a nurse, find the underlying problem or find if the patient has symptoms and treat the symptoms first. Once again, look if the patient has symptoms, treat the symptoms first, then find the underlying problem. So which of these are underlying problem for PVC? Stimulant, coffee, caffeine is bad. Uh, tobacco, alcohol can do that. Electrolyte abnormality is always number one. Stress can do that. If you have a heart problem, like you have a heart attack, you can do that. Medications can do that. These are all causes of PVC. Thank you for joining us and thank you for watching. If you need more, check adapt and click, click on the um, link below. And if you want to join our incoming crash course, check out uh, my website, https colon forward slash www.adaptandclassreview.com or email me at adaptandclass. Um, email, email me at uh, yeah, adaptedclass at gmail, right? Um, dot com, and I will give you the link for the course. It's coming up at the end of um, Thanksgiving, 30th of December 10th. Take care of yourself and good luck. Happy studying.